Hello, welcome to Double Strike Recap. Today, I'm gonna review John Wick Chapter 3, Parabellum. After breaking one of the sacred rules in the Continental Hotel, John Wick and his still unnamed dog run through the streets of New York City. He has less than an hour left until he is officially declared excommunicado. He has $14 million bounty on his head. He gets into a cabin, leaves the dog to be taken to the Continental. Next scene, John proceeds to the New York Public Library. After being directed by the librarian, he finds a book containing hidden marker coins and a crucifix necklace. A large man, Ernest, corners him in the bookshelves. John tells him he still has time left, but Ernest doesn't care, who is going to know about a few minutes. Knocking each other around the bookshelves, before John gets a heavy book and uses it to be turning, dislocate his jaw and finally snap his neck with it. It leaves him with a bad stab wound on his shoulder though. So, John visits to see the doctor to fix up his wounds but he is unable to finish the hour is up and John's life is up for grabs. John finishes the stitching himself, but before he leaves, the doctor tells him to shoot him in the right areas to make it look like John forced him to help. Next, he then starts to run through Chinatown where he is found by a gang who chase after him. They end up in a warehouse where they fight and then come across a bunch of knives, daggers and other pointy weapons. Despite their effort, John hurt knives into all the thugs. John emerges into the street and is set upon by more assassins. They follow him into horse stables, where John uses the horses and their powerful kicks to kill several foes. Before he mounts it and rides it through the streets. Thugs on motorcycles try to catch him but John takes care of them fast. John's bounty is raised to 15 million dollars. John arrives at the theater where he presents the crucifix for entry. He meets with the director, a member of the high table that has known John since he was young age. They discuss John's history, this is where he was raised. She takes him to the back of the theater, past training ballet dancers and jiu-jitsu wrestlers, and asks him what he wants. He wants passage to Casablanca. She agrees, breaking all ties with him and branding him with the cross in the process. Next scene, the Continental is visited by the Adjudicator, another high table member, coming to settle things in the wake of John breaking the rules in the hotel. She meets with Winston and tells him since he gave John a one hour head start before his contract went up, he has a week to step down as the manager of the Continental. Similarly, she visits the Bowery King and tells him to step down because he gave John a gun knowing what it would be used for. He laughs in her face, claiming that he cannot step down from the throne because he is the throne. Moves to John again, John goes to Casablanca, where he is at first attacked by hitmen. One is killed in the battle but the fight is cut short by a man who informs them both that the manager has granted John amnesty. The assassin isn't happy and attempts to attack John, but the man shoots him. He and John go to Morocco's Continental Hotel, where John is taken to see the manager, Sophia, who is accompanied by her two loyal and vicious German shepherds. Sophia, steps out of the shadows and shoots him in the chest. He falls to the ground, but his suit is bulletproof. He presents a marker that she made with John some years before, as a result of John having rescued her daughter. She asks him not to present the marker, but John insists that she must take him to see her old boss. Reluctantly, she agrees. Next scene, the adjudicator finds an assassin named Zero in the small sushi shop who recognizes her coin and tells her he didn't expect her so soon. He already knows about John and is interested in hunting him down. The adjudicator tasks him with doing so, as well as going after all those who helped him. Sophia returns to John heavily armed. She hides a weapon on one of the dog's vests. John assures her he just wants to talk to her boss, but she's skeptical. They arrive at a complex and meet with Berada, Sophia's old boss. John asks Berada to take him to the elder, the one who sits above the high table, so he can make amends. Berada doesn't know where he is, but knows that the elder only finds those who he wants to find. Berada then demands one of Sophia's dogs as repayment. But when she refuses to give the dog up, Berada shoots it. Unknown to Berada, it is wearing a bulletproof vest. 
Zhang warns her against seeking revenge, but Sophia shoots Berada and a fight with his staff ensues. The dog attacks Berada's groin. Once the guards are dead, Sophia shoots Berada in the leg and the two make their escape. But more guards are on the way. They shoot their way out of the complex, with her dogs following her commands, and then make their way to the desert. In the theater, the director watches a ballet performance by her students. Meanwhile, her guards are being cut down by brutal but efficient ninjas. Three men walk on stage and interrupt the performance. The adjudicator and Zero approach from behind. She tells the director that her agreement with the high table doesn't allow her to help John. She agrees to show her fealty. The adjudicator requires her penalty to be paid in blood. Zero runs his sword through both her hands but leaves her alive. John and Sophia drive to the desert. John pricks his finger and signs the marker with his blood. Sophia's debt is fulfilled. Sophia gives most of the water to her dogs. She swills the rest in her mouth before spitting a mouthful back into the bottle. She tells John that he is going to die, either here or later down the line. John walks into the desert with the bottle and she leaves. He walks across sand dunes for a day and a night, before he collapses. Dot the adjudicator visits the Bowery King again, the ninjas brutally cut down many guards. Zero and the adjudicator approach the Bowery King on the roof. He tells the adjudicator that he is willing to show fealty but she says that he has had his chance. He is defiant and sends his pigeon out of harm's way, before Zero deals him seven cuts as punishment for the seven bullets he gave John. The Bowery King falls to the rooftop. Back to John. In the desert, a cloaked man comes across John. Then, John wakes up in a tent. He is face to face with the Elder, who informs him that he has never seen a man so lost. He asks him why he wants to live. John says it is to remember Helen. So, the Elder gives him a choice. Die here or come the boogeyman again, remembering through death. He can never be, out like he once was, but he can reverse the, excommunicado. In exchange he must kill Winston. John agrees and pledges fealty by cutting off his wedding ring finger, and gives the ring to the elder. The elder accepts his pledge of fealty. He directs staff to help him prepare for passage back to New York and provides him with new clothes. Upon arriving in New York, John comes face to face with two assassins. However, they are cut down by some ninjas. The ninjas take John to see Zero. John and Zero are about to fight, but a line of school children interrupt them. John makes his escape, killing two motorcycle ninjas and taking a motorcycle. Zero and his ninja assassins chase John. On the freeway, while driving at high speed, John kills several sword-wielding opponents. Zero chases him into the city, but they both crash near the Continental. Since John has his hand on continental grounds, Zero cannot kill him. Karen takes John to a waiting room and Zero follows. Here, he confesses how much of a fan he is. He tells John that they're the same, but John doesn't agree. John reunites with his dog but tells him to sit and stay once Winston is ready to see him. John goes up to meet with Winston. He knows that John has been ordered to kill him on behalf of the high table. However, Winston offers him a choice. John can go ahead and kill him, living his life as a killer or he can live as a man the way Helen would have wanted. The adjudicator then arrives to find both men's. Winston refuses to step down and John refuses to kill him. She then makes a call to declare the Continental deconsecrated, meaning killing will now be allowed in the hotel. Winston opens his stash of weapons to John and Charon, while he stays in his safe room with John's dog. John and Charon process to kill some high table assassins, but they're wearing strong Kevlar armor. So, Winston supplies the men with armor, piercing rounds. Heads get blown up and bodies are riddled with bullets. After all the assassins are killed, John is left to fight Zero and his men. He is attacked by two of Zero's best men. The shinobi get the upper hand and have the opportunity to kill John, but refrain from doing so to talk about the honor of fighting him. The fight resumes and they knock John down again. As he struggles to get back up, they discuss him being out of shape because of his recent retirement. John takes off his belt and prepares it as a weapon. After a protracted third round, 
Where a tired John resorts to groin kicks and ear slaps, John is able to perform a slam on an opponent that shatters the glass ground and sends them all crashing to the lower floor. The shinobi can't get up but John can. He leaves to go and find Zero, who is on the upper floor. Zero and John have a long sword fight. Eventually, John gets the upper hand by using Zero's own, disappearing trick, against him. Even through he's badly bleeding, Zero keeps fighting until John shoves a sword straight through his chest. Worn out, both men sit together. Zero talks about how good the fight was and tells John he will catch up to him. He won't. As John leaves, Zero slumps to the side, dead. As the morning comes, the adjudicator offers to parley with Winston. They meet on the roof of the hotel. Where she offers to let Winston stay at the Continental. John arrives as the adjudicator decides Winston's show of power was a show of fealty. She reinstates the Continental and him as manager, but tells him that something must be done about John. Winston agrees and shoots John several times. The bullets bounce off his jacket but push him back until he falls from the roof, bouncing on various things which somewhat break his fall. Still, he hits the ground hard. The adjudicator is satisfied. The TikTok man wheels a cart, as John's dog follows. He tips a battered and broken John out of the cart, who rolls to a stop in front of a makeshift throne. On the throne, drinking a soda, is the Bowery King. He is cut up quite badly, and tells John to raise a hand if he can hear him. John's three-fingered hand goes up. The Bowery King talks about John's betrayal and the high table's rules. He mentions that more things get done under the table that he's really, pissed off. He asks John if he's, pissed off, too. John slowly raises his head. He's bloody and has a messed up eye but he can still answer. Yeah. See you in the next video. If you enjoy this video, don't forget to subscribe, turn on the notification and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.